Starting off, the Ducati V2 is planted with a 955cc engine, with 155 peak horsepower, and 177 peak foot-pounds of torque. At 441 pounds wet, each horsepower is pushing 2.84 pounds. The V2 comes with a host of tunable rider aids. Engine braking control. Quick shift. Traction control. ABS. And wheelie control. Each tunable to your riding style and, or riding situation. These parameters can be customized in each of the riding modes. Street. Sport. And, race. Today, I am in street mode which is nannies on high alert. No side slipping. No wheelies. ABS will be checking in more than the guards at Sing Sing. I should probably tell you about the other bikes I looked at before purchasing the V2. I was all set to lay money down on a R1 or even the MT9 SP. The R1 is priced similar to the V2 and packs a much bigger punch. But I found it twitchy and much more suited to a track bike than a bike for the public roads. The MT9 SP is a superb naked bike with an upright riding position and softer price. Decent power at 117 horsepower and 417 pounds of riding weight. Olin shocks and cruise control. What was there not to like about this bike? It could also pull double duty between track and street, even if Yamaha has not jumped on the Brembo brake train as of yet. But, it was my familiarity with the Ducati V2 that won me over. It is like I am on the 848 again. Almost. Riding position, especially the width of the bike, and sound are so similar. But now I have the rider aids and more power to push the weight. I think you plop 18,000k for this bike for one, of two reasons. Either you want the uniqueness of the Ducati over the bruteness of a bike like the R1. Or, like me, it says, remember me? I will love you even when you cheat on me with the dyed blue hair two-wheeler. Ducati seems to have addressed some issues since the 848. I have not experienced, as of yet, any issues like what I used to call the Ducati dump. Come to a light in the 848 when likely die. This was a well-known issue and not a huge issue. The bike would start right back up. But inconvenient and embarrassing. Throttle delivery is smooth. And since I installed the Ducati OEM rear sets, rear braking and shifting is precise. The display is easy to read, and switches between night, and day with the absence of daylight. Oh crap! There goes my GoPro. Now I have to go back and try and find it. Which I did eventually. Nothing like a long stroll in a thick leather coat, and padded pants, on a warm day. Right? The attachment screw was nowhere to be found, so we will enjoy this view from here on out. Now, there are some items I found less appealing about the V2. The initial tipping, starting a lean angle is not as easy as the 848, as I remember. But once you get it past a couple of degrees, it complies nicely. During these turns, it was easy to hold a line. And even when I tried to upset the motion, the bike reacted predictably. But, the least favorite trait about the V2 is the heat. The 848 had cooling fans that blew on your shins like devil farts. And at a light, you would cook your lower legs. Now, the V2 has its cooling fans underneath, and the fans are not so much the culprit. Now, it is the exhaust and cylinder under the rider's seat. And, there is no escaping it. On the 848, there was some relief while at speed. The V2's heat is with you, at any speed. If you are a young man planning a family, this is not the bike for you. The swimmer count is definitely going to go down. I want to end on the best part of this bike in my opinion. And that is the quick shift. It is marvelous. Whether upshifting, or downshifting, the shifts are incredibly quick and the rev matching is smooth. I can't get enough of it. Overall, I love this bike. And, I believe it will only get better with an titanium Akrapovich exhaust and a Lynch shocks.
the Akrapovich exhaust, has a 15-pound weight reduction, and generous mid-range torque increase. While the Olint should improve handling. Wish me luck. You guys keep on keeping on. We will catch you next time with a trip to Coda and the Moto GP.